Every time it rains, our drainage systems are increasingly put to the test. The old systems were designed to gather up the flow as quickly as possible, to take it away as fast as possible. Well, we know that the systems that we've got in place now don't work. Paved areas, roads and car parks distort the natural drainage patterns and reduce infiltration into the ground. Rainwater that would recharge groundwater or form ponds or wetlands is now washed directly to watercourses. Because virtually all our sewer systems were once combined with a single drain to carry both rainwater and sewage, our approach to stormwater has been the same as it is for fowl, to get rid of it as fast as possible. But now that much of our drainage systems are separate, fowl sewers for wastewater and storm drains for surface water runoff, we have an opportunity to rethink our attitude to urban development. We can use water in a more imaginative way one that will enhance our urban areas and improve property values while at the same time reducing many of the problems. The new methods are known as SUDS, Sustainable Urban Drainage Systems. The SUDS approach is to look at water in the urban environment from a completely different viewpoint. Instead of hiding water underground or behind concrete walls and channels, it brings it back into the community the basic philosophy is simple. To manage rainwater near to the point where it falls and where appropriate, allow it to seep into the ground where there's no risk of polluting groundwater. A process known as infiltration. The general methods include the use of permeable surfaces, filter strips, swales, basins, ponds and wetlands. Here alongside the M40 at the Oxford Motorway Services area, the developer used SUDS techniques in the construction of the new services. The original proposal was to discharge surface water via a one meter diameter drainage pipe to a river some distance from the site. But the employment of SUDS techniques meant the outlet pipe could be reduced to a mere 150 millimeters and discharged to a small nearby stream with significant cost savings. Probably this is as uh, densely used a site as you could imagine, with, as, uh, with more opportunities for pollution, more opportunities for damage than you would expect on, say, most uh, commercial sites or uh, housing areas or whatever it is. So there are a number of, of collecting systems which collect the surface water runoff as it comes down. You've got the roof system, and that's collected in a series of ponds uh, around the building. They're used both as, uh, for ornamental reasons, but they're actually doing a job as well in picking up the roof water. Uh, this is called an interceptor pond. And what's happening here is this is picking up all the water that is, is either going into the car park, which, which is picked up in porous paving, or it's picking up water on round the HGV park and the road systems into infiltration trenches. The water that goes there, which may be polluted with oil or other, ma or other substances like orange juice or milk, depending what comes down, um, a lot of the HGV vehicles drop things like hydraulic fluid or brake fluids onto the hard standings. Those trenches begin the cleaning process and the longer the water stays in them, the longer the, the cleaning process can go on. Eventually, it comes into this interceptor pond. It stays here, there's a retention time, if you like, which allows the pollution to be broken down, either be it oils or other forms of organic pollution. The water is collected slowly, it's cleaned on its way through the system. So before it actually leaves this site, it's essentially clean, and it's leaving this site, as it were, as though this were a green field site.